when I was seven, I published my first book. It's called Flying Fingers, Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And more recently, I published a second book. It's called Dancing Fingers, and it's a, a book of poetry that I co-authored with my older sister, Adriana. So Dancing Fingers is actually, uh, in here I have a section called Reflections, and that's why it's kind of appropriate that today we're going to be talking about reflective poetry. So does anyone want to tell me first, what is reflective poetry exactly? What do you do when you reflect? I'm sorry? You think about things. You think about things, you reflect this is back, very good. Um, so, I and one of the things that I actually read, and this was a long time ago when I was making this presentation, was that there's a restaurant in Japan which allows customers to hurl plates against walls. You just pay a certain fee. It's almost like going to a bowling alley. And you throw these plates against walls, and they have little pre-designed areas that you can throw a plate at. Like, for instance, I'm so mad at my sister, and you throw a plate there. And you might wonder, what is the point of throwing plates all over the place? But people love it. They say it's an excellent way to vent their anger. And Everyone feels better, I think, when they have a chance to express their feelings, but luckily I know of a slightly better way than throwing plates that may get you less scolding from your parents. Poetry allows us to express our feelings and opinions. It can be about anything. It could be about big topics like war and conflict. It could be about small topics like the color of a flower. What are some of the feelings that you've had this week? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite <laughs> Yes. Happy? Okay. What else? Frustrated. Frustrated? Yeah, I know that quite a few people may have experienced that. What else? Sad. Sad. And one more? Well, nervous. Nervous. <laughs> do you have some do you have a test coming up or do you have a test coming up? Okay. I was just wondering about, about why you were nervous. So, uh, I think that really poetry is a very effective way of expressing our feelings. And another thing to keep in mind is that your poems truly reflect your world, not just your own feelings or yourself, but your poems reflect your world. They reflect what's going on. You can use poetry to express your feelings about current events or what's going on in the news. You could write about events in your own life. So the things that you can write about in poetry, it's really an endless list. So tip number one is use poetry to reflect on ideas. Do aliens exist? Where is the center of the universe? What do animals think of us? What happens when we die? These are all different ideas that have been reflected on in poems at some point in time uh, for many, many years. For example, you could consider writing a poem based on philosophical ideas, or you could write one based on scientific ideas. Have any of you written a poem, reflective kinds of poetry before? Yeah. No? Okay. So I'm glad, that, I'm glad that we're having this session then, because reflective poetry is a really great way either to get your feelings out uh, about yourself or what's going on in your own life or what's going on in the world. And there's a lot going on in the world right now, obviously, in current events. So. Uh, it's, it provides a great amount of material to work with. But I have to say that, you know, hearing about current events, hearing about philosophical ideas, this all might sound kind of intimidating, but you really don't have to necessarily understand the idea in order to write about it, because poetry is a good way to explore something that you're not quite sure of. It can be a good opportunity to do research, uh, and I think that a lot of writing is like this. For instance, the other day I was writing a story and it was kind of inspired by this new story. Did, did any of you hear the story about the piano that was just left on that little sandbar in Florida? Mysteriously out in the middle of the water? Yeah, some of you might have heard of that. So I, I didn't really know a whole lot about the story. I mean, I'd seen like a video or something. But I, it sort of inspired me to write a story. And the story wasn't necessarily about it. It was just kind of reflecting on it and using it as a metaphor. And so taking things that we hear about it might allow us to go more in depth. We don't necessarily have to be an expert, but we can still reflect on it. Maybe if you've wondered if humans will always exist, what will happen in the future, 
and people have been really worried about the fate of human life for quite a while. There have been all kinds of movies, if, if any of you have seen some of those. And I thought about the question myself a couple years ago in In Dancing Fingers, then in the reflection section, I have a poem that's called A Long Stare, and it's basically on that topic. What will happen when the fields are gone and damp is the desert expanse? Will barrenness adorn the dawn and silence fill our dance? Will the earth be lit by darkness and table by years of dust? Is civilization's road of starkness what crystal ball is just? Will wings yet touch the clouds? Will hope rise to the sky? Will despair slip out from shroud as time was passing by? So it's a this kind of look at uh, what will happen in the future. And basically, it's not really sure. There's questions that kind of goes both ways, if you see at the end uh, contrasting that. So this is a poem I wrote, um, I think about three years ago, and it was obviously reflecting on that question. So our activity then that we're going to start with is to write a poem inspired by one of the following ideas. And this activity is really designed so that you're not necessarily an expert on any of the issues or any of the quotes, and you may not even know exactly where they come from. We don't have to mention the idea or quote it or anything like that, but just uh, choose one to read, reflect on, and write a poem. So here are the quotes. Imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited to all we now know and understand, while imagination embraces the entire world and all there ever will be to know and understand. It is a common saying, and in everybody's mouth, that life is but a sojourn. What, this one, I know that some people don't quite get this one. What, what is life is but a sojourn? I'm sorry? Um, oh, could you repeat that, please? A journey. A journey? Yes. Very good. So um, this one's basically saying life is a journey. Um, this one is William Shakespeare, actually from Hamlet, which I was reading recently, so uh, kind of funny. But there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. I think that somehow we learn who we really are and then live with that decision, Eleanor Roosevelt. I want you to be everything that's you deep at the center of your being, Confucius. And so. Uh, of these quotes, uh, raise your hand if you'd like to, we're going to do this as a collaborative activity, so raise your hand if you'd like the Albert Einstein quote, okay, uh, raise your hand if you'd like the Plato quote, raise your hand if you'd like the William Shakespeare quote, Two, okay. uh, raise your hand if you'd like the Eleanor Roosevelt quote, or raise your hand if you have a Confucius quote. Okay, uh, which one won? Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Okay, yeah, it's a little bit hard for me to see everyone, so. Oh, wow. Okay. I know. We're on both sides of the library here, so I'm trying to pan so you can see both Hello. sides. Hello, nice to see some. <laughs> okay, wow. Um, yeah, so that's, that's good. We'll start with the Shakespeare. So, looking at this quote, what are some of the first words that come to mind? What are some of the things that you think about it? You don't have to analyze it from a literary standpoint, but just reflect about it. What do you think about this quote? Okay. Well, oh, sorry. I was just telling them, I'm the teacher, and I was just telling them, they voted on this quote, so they should be able to have some thoughts about it. Okay, let's start with, um, and I know that a lot of people complain about Shakespeare, they're like, oh, the English, it's really not understandable. So why don't we start with just saying, okay, what does this quote say? There are more things in heaven and earth ratio than are dreamt of in your philosophy. What does that say in modern English? You know, we can't comprehend everything. You can't um, comprehend everything. Very good. Uh, very concise way of putting it. Yeah, exactly. When he says there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy, he's saying, uh, yeah, you can't comprehend, you can't even dream of everything that there is. So, uh, very good. Now, how, how do you see that reflected in your own life? Are there any things that 
you don't know often that you suddenly learn, but you still realize that you don't know everything. Probably most of us have had that experience. You know, when I was when I was little, I was like, oh, my mom knows everything, my dad knows everything, and I had that belief that there were people who absolutely knew everything because they seemed so knowledgeable. And so as as we get older, then we realize, no, unfortunately, uh, there's we can't really know everything. We can't comprehend everything, and it's in part because of that quote. So what's an idea for a poem you might get inspired by this? How about, um, when, when you were little, how many of you thought that it was possible to know everything? I did. I know, I see some raised hands. A lot of us, a lot of us probably had those thoughts. So maybe we could start with a, uh, a line about something along that line about being little and thinking that it was possible to know everything and uh, going on that premise. And remember that we don't have to stick, like we don't have to use this quote exactly and we don't have to uh, do a analysis of it. I'm sitting down here at the keyboard. So uh, let me open up a new page and we'll start writing this. Okay. What, what should the first line be? Should it be, when I was little, I thought some people knew everything? Is there a way I could word that better? It's, with, you know, with, um, you guys are our seventh grade, right? Yeah. Okay, with, I, I found it that when, if this was like a fourth or fifth grade classroom, everyone would have their hands up, and not because they know better, but because, and I'm not sure if you guys have seen this, but it seems like, like, first, second, third, they're all, all hands in the air, and then, um, when, when you get to seventh, eighth, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, so I'd like to see some, at least there's one person out there who has an idea, um, maybe not for this line, but for our next line, so I'll just start off. When I was little, I thought some people knew it all. Everything there was to know. Okay. Oh yeah, sorry. There we go. When I was little, I th when I was little, I thought some people knew it all. Everything there was to know. Uh, what should the next line be? It doesn't necessarily have to rhyme. This could be an unrhyming po poem. It could be a rhyming poem. Think of when you were little and you thought people knew, some people knew everything. What were your thoughts? What are your reflections? I'm sure that some of you can remember when you were little, a little bit at least. Any ideas for the next line? Okay. Uh, when I was little, I thought some people knew it all. Everything there was to know. They had it stored inside their minds. Whoever makes the line, just bring over past the Why don't, okay, uh, maybe we, I can get you to help in a very, it doesn't require too much effort to think of rhymes for minds or no, because I want my next line to rhyme. I'm sure, I'm sure you can come up with some rhymes. Right? It could just be a couple of words. Okay. 
It doesn't have to be rhyming, but basically I just want to think of a word that, unless you can come up with the next line, then I was, um, then I was thinking it would be good if, I, if I'm writing the next line, then I just want to rhyme either no or mines. As far as the last word of those lines. Uh, Okay, so we have bro, show, okay. Oh, say that again? That sounds great. I heard the show. What was it? Very in their heart, it was the show. Very, buried in... Let me make sure I've gotten this right. Buried in the heart it was to show? Yes. Great, okay. And our next line, it can rhyme or it doesn't have to rhyme. This is a collaborative activity for a reason. Oh, go ahead, yes. Every, every fact every and every scientific find Every fact and every scientific find, every, what else? What else is there to know? There's facts, there's scientific finds. What are some of the other things that you learn or that you know? Every phrase shown in line. Every phrase and every line? Was that what you said? Okay. If I was lucky, Maybe I would grow to know everything. But it was slow. Okay, uh, this is, so this is some of our poem. And it's kind of interesting, it doesn't really have a set structure of any kind. We just sort of randomly rhymed occasionally. Uh, here's the poem. When I was little, I thought some people knew it all. Everything there was to know, they had it stored inside their minds. Buried in the heart was to show every fact and every scientific find, every phrase and every line. If I was lucky, maybe I would grow to know everything, but it was slow. So it ends on kind of a uh, slightly frustrating note about how slow it is to learn everything. And in fact, it's a little bit impossible because as we learn from that quote, there's more in heaven and earth ratio than drums up in your philosophy. And as I said, poetry is a great way to explore ideas that we're not quite sure of. So when we looked at that quote, obviously we didn't have a whole lot of ideas about, okay, let's reflect on it, let's see what there is to, to um, add to this, but I think that we turned it into a, a reasonable poem, and it, and it ended up being, we took this into our own personal experience from being when we were little, away from this Shakespeare quote. So you can reflect on something like a quote and really make it your own. You can use poetry to express your opinions about the world around you, but as I've said many times. I watch news about politics, about current events a lot every day, and I'm often either frustrated or I'm happy or whatever feelings I'm feeling, I sometimes get those down in poetry. So does anyone tell me what are some current events going on right now? There's the, yeah, there's the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, very good, what else? The congresswoman that was shot. The congresswoman that was shot, yeah, Gabrielle Gufford. What else uh, has happened in Arizona? I haven't watched this at all. A lot of suicide bombers, okay, what else? The bird died. Yep, the birds dying. I, I think it was actually really widespread because there was that big, huge incident in Arkansas, and then I, I think a, another state had something similar. So that was also very really interesting. And one more current event. Uh, okay. Fish dies. I'm sorry? Oh, I, I did. 
Oh. All the snow. All the earthquakes. Earthquakes. Earthquakes, yes. All throughout last year, there have been, uh, there's an earthquake in Chile, there's an earthquake in Haiti. Um, so yeah, there, there have been a lot of different earthquakes that have uh, really done a lot of damage. So the majority of this news, if you think about it, birds dying, suicide bombers, congresswomen getting shot, what is a common thread through quite earthquakes, a lot of what the current events you brought up? Death. They're sad, yeah, they're all, they're all either violent or they're sad, but it, yeah, in general, they, they're all sad kinds of news. I didn't hear anyone, you know, say the news about someone winning a trophy or something like that. And yeah, there has been a lot of sad news on the news recently. What, how might you use poetry to reflect on that? What are some different ways that you could uh, use poetry? For instance, I might write a poem expressing my sadness, and I might use a few examples. I might write a poem from the perspective of someone for whom it was a very ordinary day, going shopping or going walking out in the street, and then you know tragedy struck somehow, whether it was a shooting or a suicide bomb or one of those kinds of violent attacks that you mentioned. Or I could even write a poem about dead birds. I could take it very literally and write poems specifically about those instances, or I could be a little less direct and I could uh, use the dead birds, for instance, as a metaphor for something else. So yeah, there's really a lot of ways that you can take what's going on in news and bring it into your writing. As said, I was using that piano on a sandbar to, to um, inspire a story of mine. So you can take things like that and not necessarily write about them literally. I wasn't writing up a news report about this is what happened to the piano. I was write, using it as a metaphor. So it's fairly easy to do. A couple years ago, I wrote this poem, The Perfect Club. We banish every hypocrite who professes to be just, then throws a child's life away and says that they must. We exile the power hungry who sit upon their thrones and then do nothing good for us, but leave us all alone. We do not care for greediness, nor liars flaming red. We believe their mouths are sour from everything they said. The overproud may strut outside, they'll stain our reputation. Our club is flawless, yet I wish it were a nation. And basically this is expressing, there's a lot of problems with many different countries around the world, and it doesn't seem like any country is absolutely perfect, doesn't have any problems. So it's all these different problems, whether with leaders, whether with people, whether uh, with different bad qualities, that seem to affect a lot of different places. I do realize that not everyone shares my interest in politics. I was, I'm, I'm fairly interested in the topic, and you know, I watch like the State of the Union every year and stuff like that. But there's plenty of other world events that you can write about. What are some other things you might write about besides politics or besides uh, dead birds? Sports. The forest was that what I heard? Sports. Oh, sports! <laughs> okay, uh, sports, yeah, that's a great topic. You know, well, actually, there have been quite a few famous poems that have been written about sports. I can't remember the name of it, but it's extremely famous, and maybe some of you have read it, you know, about the, um, uh, Casey comes to that in Mudville, or it was, I remember reading that a, a while ago. So, yeah, there's, there have been some very famous poems written about sports. What are some of their topics? I'm sorry? Yes, actually, and that's an excellent one. I'm surprised nobody mentioned that uh, when we were talking about print events, is the, the snow apocalypse, as <laughs> some people are calling it, which I find a little bit uh, a little bit extreme. But yeah, definitely when you get a couple feet of snow. My my grand um, my grandpa lives in New Hampshire and he was saying that the snow in the driveway was um, just incredibly high, like above some people's heads. So that was uh, interesting to hear about the snow that they're putting out there. You could write about the weather. Uh, and one more thing you could write about, reflective poetry. Friendship. I'm sorry? Friendship. Friendship. 
The brand friendship. Brand friend. Friendship. Friendship. And, and you don't have to necessarily limit yourself just to topics that other people suggest or that you can think of. You can really uh, think of things that other people have written about poems before, take that inspiration. Uh, so you guys can come up with some excellent topics. And some other things that you might consider writing about, you could write poetic responses to natural disasters, uh, car crashes, scientific discoveries, local news stories, weird news stories, riots, even celebrities. You might think, oh, I can't write a meaningful poem about a celebrity, about Britney Spears or something. But you can. You can reflect on just about anything, anyone. Uh, it may not be the most meaningful poem if you're only, like, I don't know, describing a Britney Spears song, but it might be a little more meaningful if you were using one of her songs as a metaphor for something else. Just, just saying. There's ways, if you want to make something sound meaningful or be meaningful, that you want to just reflect on it and share your insight. So now you have some of these different topic ideas, and uh, we're going to also take a look at some specific writing strategies for writing poems. When you write a poem based on current events, then pay attention to the words used to describe the event and uh, the words that are used related to the event. For instance, um, you might hear things like, if you heard about Hurricane Katrina in the news many years ago. Then you probably heard words like Gulf Coast, deadliest, levee system, New Orleans, Louisiana, parishes, breaches, overturn. All of these are different keywords, words that they would use in the news, used quite often describing the event, uh, because it obviously took place in New Orleans. The levees broke, there were many parishes or counties damaged. So those would be a couple words and you might want to use those in your poetry. And this is why you might not sit down and write a poem that was like, I heard about Hurricane Katrina on the news yesterday. Or you might, but that might not be the um, necessarily the way you start your poem. You might write something instead describing the destruction firsthand. And you, without even having to mention the name Hurricane Katrina, you wouldn't have to actually say, you would probably, the, the reader would probably get it from Gulf Coast Deadliest Levee System New Orleans. You know, seeing those words, that's what you think of. So you can use such words to tell your reader a lot about what you're writing about. Using specific words is also a good way to keep your poetry from sounding bland. When you write about a current event, then you might use different jargon or phrases that scientists use. For instance, counterclockwise, I am intercourse, storm surge. Why might you want to use specific words versus general words when you're writing your poem? Make it interesting, very good. Yeah, when you look at more specific words, then you, I was like wondering whether you're touching your hair, whether you're raising your hand. Um, and so thanks for, thanks for speaking. Um, and when you look at these specific words, then you, they really evoke a lot more emotion than say if you just said there was a hurricane, it flooded a lot, or something like that. You would, if you use specific words, and you made your language interesting, then it would be definitely more interesting to the reader. Keeping a running list of interesting, specific, descriptive words could provide a great source of inspiration, and it's a good way to make your poem sound realistic. If you're writing about Hurricane Katrina, and it's, say, four years afterwards, five years afterwards, how many, many years it is afterwards, then when you have these descriptive words, it makes you sound like it's coming very firsthand, very close after, instead of uh, writing it quite many, many years after. Because when you use these descriptive words, it really puts you right in action. So, our next activity, and I'm hoping that you can participate a little bit more in this one, is choose a current event to write a poem about. So, uh, what current event should we write about? All the snow. All the snow. Okay. Uh, raise your hand you think we should write about um, all the weather. Okay, so that's our first choice. Okay. Great. And 
uh, raise your hand if you think that we should write about any of the other topics that we mentioned. Okay, I think we can probably just go with the weather then. I think that that's a great one um, to reflect on, as well as it provides a lot of good descriptive words that we can use. So, uh, now, explore two different news articles or news programs about the event. Uh, did, did anyone watch TV about it, or did anyone read it in the newspaper? How did you find out about it? Okay. So maybe even actually hearing about an airport getting shut down. Uh, so for instance, I learned about it when I was watching the world news uh, over the past couple of days. It's been talking about the snow apocalypse, <laughs> which is where I heard that term. And now write down the words reporters use to describe the event. Okay, perfect. So. Uh, what are some of the words that you've heard people use to describe the weather, use to describe the snow? Scary. Scary. Snow apocalypse. Uh, I don't even know how to spell it. Okay. Um, great. What else? What are some other words? Cold. 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 Okay. Heat. Dangerous. Extreme. Extreme. Other words? I'm sorry? Deadly. Deadly? Deadly. Yeah. Frostbite. Frostbite? Wow, really? Yeah, I can see. I, I heard that a lot of people got frostbite, actually. There was a. Apparently, some people just went walking outside, didn't notice how cold their toes were until they went inside and looked at them and they were black. So when you have black toes as a result of walking outside in the cold, that is usually not a good sign. Yeah, that was. Um, and that little sad. Uh, frostbite, but, uh, one more word, two more words. Hamstay. I'm sorry? Hamstay. Hamstay. Devastating. Devastating, okay, sorry about that. And is there one more word? Catastrophe. Catastrophe, okay. Oh. Great. Oh, so here, here's the, our giant list of words that can be used to describe the uh, snowstorm. And what about you guys? You, what's the weather like outside? You really haven't been affected. I'm seeing some people wearing t-shirts. You really haven't been affected much by the snow, right? Yeah. It's, it's pretty hot outside. Okay. <laughs> It's not snowing, right? Uh, yeah. The sun's out right now. Okay, the sun's out. Um, now, I've, I'm actually going to Tampa, Florida uh, this weekend for a conference. and So I'm really looking forward to it because they say it'll be like 70 degrees, but also a little bit rainy. But next, after that, then I'm going to Washington, D.C., where it's like snowing and really cold. And then after that to Montreal in Canada, where it will be really, really cold. <laughs> so hopefully none of our flights get canceled or something, but uh, we'll just have to hope for the best. Um, so let's focus on writing our reflective poem about this, about the huge snowstorm. Next, let's um, make a list of some of the words that describe how we feel when we think about this story or when we think about the snow. Epic. Epic. Okay. Great. What are some other words? Epic. Happy. 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 <laughs> I know, I find that uh, kids are always way happier about snowstorms than parents and adults are. I think it's because adults are like, oh man, I can't like drive to the grocery store, get to work or something like that. But for kids it's like, woo, I can <laughs> play outside stuff. So. Okay, so epic, happy, what else? Fun. 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 Exciting. I'm sorry? Exciting. Exciting. And awesome. awesome. Okay, one more word. Cool. Cool. And that actually applies in more ways than one. Alright, so now that we have our giant list of words, then we're going to write a poem about this using some of these words that we've collected. Uh, so, why don't we start with uh, we could start with like describing. We, here's a few options as far as how we could start. We could start with describing a, like an image of the snow, what it looks like. It's 
piled up above my head or something like that if we want to have it be really dramatic. Um, we could start with saying what it is, like they called it the snowpocalypse or something. Uh, we could start with our own feelings about it. So which of these do you think we should do? <coughs> they called it the snowpocalypse. They called it the snowpocalypse. Okay, why not start dramatic? Okay. They called it the snowpocalypse. I'm seriously sounding that out and don't take my spelling on this too literally, but and so how should we follow up our dramatic first line? It was so called it froze my lips. <laughs> it was so cold it froze my lips, alright. Oh, and by the way, reflective poetry can be humorous too. It's um, a nice convenient crossover. Uh, but how, so how do we reflect that? Maybe, and you know, this might be a good time for, if this person's lips had been frozen off, what would their feelings about the snow probably be? Mad. Mad, exactly. So they might be mad in comparison to everyone else saying, oh, this is epic, it's happy, it's fun, it's exciting. They would be mad. They would, it would probably be painful. So adding some words that maybe the narrator thinks describes the, the snow would be appropriate for Others called it epic. Others called it fun. Me, I just thought of frozen lips and, uh, okay, they called it the snow, oh, woo, what happened? It's odd. My screen suddenly shorted out. It's not good. Uh oh. That's very strange. Um, give me a second. Uh-oh. Um, oh dear. That's not good at all. I don't know. I'm going to reconnect this quickly and hopefully it'll work. Uh, it's not good. Um, okay, well while I'm, while I'm, uh, fiddling with this, um, why don't, so, what else, what else, are some po uh, negative things that they might have associated with the snow. Frozen lips and... Frostbite. Frostbite, okay. Ah, yeah, it's back, okay. I just thought of frozen lips and frostbite. 